thanks, everybody. Founders Five is such a fallacy. The idea of just speaking for five minutes is just wrong to even in its very premise. So it's, anyway, I'm, I swear I'm gonna keep it to five minutes and no longer than five more. <laughs> but it's good to be with you. And, and on it just, we just wanna say thanks for coming on the July 4th weekend. You know, when the years ago, when we were much smaller, we'd, we'd try to think, come up with ideas of things to do after church on Sunday to invite people to. We'd have picnics or whatever, to, to get people to come to church on a holiday weekend. But obviously with nothing, but are we having hot dogs today? Of course. I know you're here for the hot dogs. But anyway, <laughs> thanks for coming on July, July 4th weekend. I want to share with you just, for, just briefly, one of the things that is really, I think, the, 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 the foundational spiritual discipline that has been a, a hallmark for our family and for our lives, and, and it might not be what you're thinking about when I talk about spiritual disciplines because you think, well, is it worship? Is it coming to church? Is it prayer? All of those are, are awesome. Is it reading your Bible? All those are important part of your life. But honestly, I think the thing that's really helped us most to be as stable individuals and a stable family is what you, what you just experienced here just a minute ago when, when Alexa prayed over the tithes and offerings. It's, it's really your giving. And if you're here this morning, I, again, I understand whenever a pastor speaks about giving, it can sound self-serving. And I don't want it to sound like that because I can tell you, even today, when, when it was time to give, there were some of you who were excited about that. You said you understand the principle of giving and receiving. You understand the principle of sowing and reaping. And so it's an exciting time for you. For others of you, it's a little bit neutral. You're you're, you don't understand it necessarily. It's not a big thing to you. You're happy to give when, when you, you feel led to. Uh, but then there's a third person who's offended by it. And, and there are people who are maybe here sitting today that as, as we were talking about giving, it's like, oh, there they go again. The church just wants our money. Well, the, the responsibility of the church is and not the leadership of the church. It's the people who come to the church. They're the one who pays the bill. Because how many know the, all of this electricity going on here? Consumers doesn't give it to us. <laughs> we, they didn't say, oh, you're a church. Bless you. Here, Here's a thousand kilowatts. Just have at it. But let, let me just share with you this verse, just a couple of verses. Number one, it's in first, or excuse me, Second Corinthians chapter 9. I, I love this because it talks about God and, and the, the nature of God. And, and this month you're going to hear a series of messages about the different names of God. But one of my favorite names of him is Father. He's a good father to us. And he says this, this generous God, I'm speaking out of the, the passion translation, this generous God, our God, who supplies abundant seed for the farmer, which becomes bread for our meals, is even more extravagant towards you. First, he supplies every need, plus more. Then he multiplies the seeds you have sown so that the harvest of your generosity will grow. You will be abundantly enriched in every way as you generously, on every occasion, for when we take your gifts to those in need, it causes many to give thanks to God. First thing I want you to know is God is good. And he's good all the time. And his goodness is not dependent upon your giving. He gives bread to the eater. When you're hungry, God has a sandwich for you. Now I made, just as an example, a wonderful peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And so the spiritual discipline of giving is, you know what, before I take a bite of this luscious sandwich, I'm going to let you have a bite. I'm going to bring a bite to God. All he wants is a bite. And how many know that after he takes his bite, there's nine more bites left. And, and frankly, that's all I need. <laughs> and don't say amen so quickly to that. Ah, <laughs> oh, gone it, you guys. But that's the point. The point is when you connect with God's economy, there's something really powerful to that. You're connected in what God's doing. I just noticed the other day that, that Apple, Apple just reached a $3 trillion with a T market capitalization. Now that might mean nothing to you unless what? Unless you own Apple stock. Then it means a whole lot. Best mom owned Apple stock. And God rest her soul, what was happy for us about her owning Apple stock is it blessed her? But you know what? When she passed, it blessed us, and it's going to bless our kids. 
Why is it? Because we're connected to what God is doing. I'm telling you what, there's something powerful about learning to give. And, our, and I just want to share with you, just our commitment to this is just important to just get it in your head. This is part of the spiritual life. It, it seems so natural. It seems so physical. But I'm telling you what, it settles your heart and it brings peace when you plant seeds in God's kingdom. And all it takes is just willing to share what God's already given to you. And because of that, we, as, as you know, we've always tried to be leaders in giving. So I'm finally, we finally filled out our giving for this campaign that's going on between June and, and the end of the year. We're going to give $5,000 towards the campaign. We promised to do that. But I want you to know this. Over the years, we've been some of the largest givers to the church. Now, that seems crazy for a pastor. In fact, did you know that for 25 years, we, Beth and I, had given the single largest gift the church ever received? It came from us until about two years ago somebody blew us out of the water <laughs> but that's okay but we were happy for that to happen but the point is this because of just always having a heart to give there was the settlers in our hearts even in times when they were tough because how many know we go through tough times all of us do where there just doesn't seem to be enough but I've learned in those times when it doesn't when we don't seem to have enough that we serve a God who is always enough and I've already gone over a minute, so God bless you guys. Enjoy the rest of the service. We love you. God bless you. And who wants a sandwich?